So I want to dive into a little bit about what, if any, distinction you place on EAs versus versus a VA. Yeah. So you got a lot of A's out there. You got administrative assistants, right? That's kind of where the world started when we stopped using the word secretary. When we graduated from secretary, we got admin assistants and then we had executive assistants. Right. So in the in-person, in the office world, that's really what you have. You have admin assistants. And if you're at a huge company like Amazon and I live, you'll have an executive. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've got admin one, admin two, admin three, and you got executive assistant one, executive assistant, you got all these layers. Mm -hmm. That's still somewhat relevant. Now the VA, the virtual assistant world emerges, pops up, right? If people like, what's his name, Ferris, who wrote the four hour work week, right? People read that book and then they go, okay, I'm going to get a VA to run this company and this company and this company and run this and run that. The virtual assistant world is kind of the wild, wild west. It means a lot of different things. It means you you can get a lot of cheap labor overseas is a big part of it, right? So you can get Philippines. Philippines is big, depending upon what you want done, right? You could get your coding done out of India. You could get your mm-hmm. social media run out of um, Argentina. Get your, You can get stuff farmed out all over the world. Mm-hmm. So that's a big part of the virtual assistant. When people think of a virtual assistant, a lot of times they think of that. Now, here in the U.S., there are virtual assistant agencies now, full-on mm-hmm. firms but mm-hmm. that's all they do is virtual assistants. They are U.S. based. They have right U.S. based people working here. I'm a part of that industry. Okay. So I made up. I'm going to call these people virtual executive assistants because okay. what I wanted was I wanted people to be able to hire somebody part time, but that had that caliber of the mm-hmm. person that's on the 40th floor of the downtown high rise. Mm-hmm outside the office of the CTO, CMO, CEO, CIO, mm-hmm. that caliber. Right. So I didn't want to call them a VA. Now there are some right. VAs that are that caliber, but it just has to do with how, how it occurs for people. Right. I just wanted to call it a virtual executive assistant. Cause I want people to know you're getting an executive assistant. So when Amazon says they're hiring for executive assistant level two or whatever, this is the caliber of person you're getting. Right. But you can have them for just 10 or 15 hours a week because you probably don't need them for 40. Mm-hmm. That Those now – so, sorry, I'm missing a few, few things all together. So you've got the VA, U.S.-based VA agencies, of mm-hmm. which I would say I'm a part of. Right. But I would say I'm in a niche market in there. Mm-hmm. What niche I market that, is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's – a. Well, what I would call the high caliber top okay. shelf market. Okay. That's so that is thinking. the people right. that are willing to invest and they want to invest mm-hmm. in the, more of like a business partner. Yeah. Somebody who over time would become their representative who could speak mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. Different mm-hmm. than, this isn't to put down others, but different than task doing. Right. And farming out your task doing to VAs is super smart. And you really could get some really cheap task doing done in mm-hmm. the Philippines, but it has its pros and cons and its challenges and its payoffs, right? Both. So same thing in the U.S. There's a lot of U.S. VA firms where you would get a lot of task doing. Now, you may not mm-hmm. necessarily get somebody that you want to have write the email to your client. Right. But you may not also be shopping for that. And that's right. okay. And then in the VA world, you also have just the independent unicorns out there. Sally Sue, who's sitting at her dining room table in the middle of Kansas City, and she's probably a rock star. Maybe she was in business. Maybe she even has a master's degree, but she's just a solopreneur out there. And Mm -hmm. I call those the unicorns because they're worth, they're they're great, and they're not going to charge you as much as an agency is going to charge you. But now you got to go. Good luck finding them. Yeah, good luck finding them. Yeah, 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 that's really interesting. Um. Do you find, and of course, most of these people are coming to you through referrals, but do you find that you are are taking time, and if so, how much to actually educate people on what you just educated me about and our audience? In terms of the industry? 
Yeah. Like what the difference is between, you know, an executive virtual assistant or executive assistant and a, you know, in, in AA or a VA, right? Because, yeah. because I am, in fact, I just had another one yesterday, some US based company, you know, sending me as usual, a pitch on LinkedIn. Hi, we, you know, we, we have these people to hire. I'm like, that's a really awesome. Thank you for, you know, People yeah. don't understand how to sell, but that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other podcast. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So a little bit, we may, and you're talking about prospects, right? Prospective clients. And do we need to educate them on these right. various yes. distinctions? Yes. Sometimes we do, um, but a lot of times they just don't care. They just okay. want what their friend has, right. Right? right? You want a Dorian. Yeah. You would like a Dorian working for you. That's all. Right. You don't care what we call her, whether we call her a alligator or a VA or a what. You just want somebody who does what she does for mm -hmm. Jennifer. You want one of those for you. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what people do is people say, I, they'll often go, Gabe referred me. I want a Christina because they interact with the EA. Right. Of, of course. Clients. Yeah. They want so what they, they, go, what they I like. Want how, I love how Christina is with Gabe. Can, and sometimes they'll even be like, can I have Christina? And we'll be like, no, but we're in the business of creating who Christina is. So a yeah. lot of times that's all. And they don't really need to know all those distinctions every now and then they might ask, but frankly, mostly they just want what their friend has. Right. That's really great. Carol Schultz here. Thanks for watching this excerpt from Authentically Successful. The conversation doesn't end there. So if you want to hear this episode in full and all my conversations with many other successful founders and CEOs, please visit verticalelevation.com slash podcast.